So step two, prepare yourself. We just talked about how you should keep your feet shoulder width apart, keep your back neutral, and bend your knees and lift the resident by using your leg and arm muscles, not your back. Your leg and arm muscles have the greatest strength. You already wrote it down. You should have. It's already written. Step three, determine how to do the move. You're going to get as close as possible to what you are moving. Keep your palms up when lifting and get up under whatever you are lifting. And sometimes, most times, people rock to gain momentum. When somebody's getting up off a low couch, if you think about it, or you yourself, you're going to rock. So after the third rock. You can shoot up, correct? Okay. Okay. The next thing we're going to talk about is pre preventing falls. Preventing falls. Many facilities have fall prevention program programs. And these fall prevention programs, they are good because they actually give you an opportunity to see why residents fall. And we get down, we do a root cause analysis, especially with residents who have repeat falls. We actually sit in a meeting and we um, talk about the fall, what happened, what do we think happened, what could have happened versus what shouldn't have happened. And typically, most of the time, if a resident has multiple Incident reports from a fall, if you look at the reports, most people fall around the same time. And I'm going to give you an example of what I mean. You could have a resident who's nocturnal, meaning they stay up all night. And that resident probably stays up all night because professionally they work that night. So when they fall, they're getting up, they're getting up to do what? And get ready for work. Mm-hmm. It's difficult to ch transition, change your sleeping pattern. If you work night shift for 25 years, yeah, you're probably going to sleep that way for a long time. And so oftentimes when we find residents are falling um, at odd times, it's because of a pattern they established when they were a working adult. So residents fall for a lot of reasons, health conditions, medication. They're getting up to go to the bathroom. Clutter rooms, clutter rooms. Anybody in here real close to a grandparent? Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this question. Do your grandparent has, do they have a lot of rugs? Yes. Lots of rugs on top of rugs. Yours don't? In the living room, there are no rugs. Yeah, rug on top of rug. Mm -hmm. I'm a witness to that. <laughs> and those rugs create chaos. It's actually a fall hazard because you could trip. Especially if it's a non-skid rug. They don't think about when they buy rugs that you need to buy the type that's not going to slip. It needs to be slip resistant. So what do we do to prevent the falls? We report any, any issues with the lights you see reported. Any equipment you see that's broken, lock it out of sight and tag it keep pathways clear of course because you don't want them to fall eliminate clutter by removing any unnecessary items and keep personal things in reach like cell phones um remote controls glasses anything you may you feel like they may get up in the middle of the night to get keep it within reach okay water yes water picture close by the bed now, when it comes to environmental awareness, wet floors, that's an issue. It will cause people to fall. If you see a wet, a spill, clean it up immediately and put a wet floor sign down. It's just common. Now, those are basically all of the environmental issues you may see at the workplace in regards to a fall. Another issue you may see is electrical safety. You may think electrical safety is not an issue with the patients or the residents. It can be because elderly people are cold often, so they may 
want a warm blanket, a heated blanket. They can't have it. They can't have heating pads. They can't have any of that stuff. And number one, when it comes to electrical safety, we never use electrical devices in your ward, ever. If you're going to wash your hands, always completely dry your hands before you're using any electrical device. In long-term care, we cannot use extension cords. They are not allowed. And I always pay attention to items that are brought in by the family because that's when we check stuff off and, you know, we have to let them know it's unfortunate, but your loved one, they cannot have a heating pad. That's enough. Yeah. So you got to have all the yeah. Especially when people have neuropathy and different things, nerve damage, and they don't feel when it's getting too hot. So they just burn and burn and burn. All right, chemical safety. By law, all employers and employees must know about any chemical hazard in the workplace. And you have to know how to protect yourself, okay? Material safety data sheet, MSDS. Did we talk about that yesterday? It could have been with my night class. Material safety data sheet. That's a book that has all of the chemicals in the building, in the book. From the um, Windex we use to clean the windows to the Clorox spray for the bathroom. Every chemical in that building is going to be in your MSDS book. Now, you have multiple books in the building. You may have one. I know one for sure at Hillview is in the time clock. There's one in dietary. And I know there's one in laundry department also. Now, the right to know law. The right to know law states that it's your right to know about any chemical in that book if you give the facility a request and you put it in writing, they have 48 hours to give you a response, okay? 48 hours. Well, OSHA, that's a another issue that falls on OSHA. Safety around oxygen. Now, you guys already know oxygen and flames don't mix. So you want to, um, no smoking when oxygen is in use. Most facilities are non-smoking for that reason. And I want you guys to think about it because we oftentimes don't think about safety when it comes to oxygen. Let's say you have one resident smoking and, um, a fire happens. Did y'all know, think about it. There's one room in the building that probably holds canisters full of oxygen. If the fire gets to that room, what's going to happen? Major. But then you have other rooms sporadically with oxygen canisters because you have residents on oxygen. It becomes like a domino effect. You get to that oxygen canister, canister there's an explosion, and then it will continue. But the grand scheme of things will be a great explosion if the fire gets to that oxygen holding room. A lot of the patients that smoke? Right? No. Mm -mm. Did you ask if they allow a lot of residents? Yeah. So, which would you rather deal with? Somebody's disapproval about smoking or you being responsible for 140 lives and you having a difficult time managing that process because you got residents in your building smoking while on oxygen? Oxygen safety is real serious when it comes to smoking. And I don't smoke, but I like to eat. So I, I pretty much, an addiction is an addiction. Whether you're overeating or you're smoking. So just think about what you like to indulge in. What is it you like to indulge in? Food, okay. What about you? I just have a really bad chip problem. Chips. So that's your addiction. What if you couldn't get any? Any food? Yeah. No. Food. See, that's how people feel about cigarettes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying too. Like some people will be like, I can't. They're gonna be like, you know, they have their moments of, they're like frustrated, you know. Like, I get like cravings. Mm -hmm. And then I ask my boyfriend, like, hey, can you get this? No. Nope. What's your favorite chip? I like the the standard like something hot, like spicy. I like spicy oh. chips. I love spicy. I can eat anything spicy. 
I don't eat it too often now, but I never really like, had a problem. But and I like spicy food, like I really like spicy stuff. You know, some people just crave joys. <laughs> the joy is the spice and the juice is the spice. <laughs> yeah. Now disaster plans. Has anybody in here ever been through a disaster? I have never. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have? What what type of disaster? Hmm. One time, just one time, it was very severe. Okay. There was flooding. Flooding. Yes. Bad. Bad. Oh, Bad. wow. Bad. Flooding. We don't have natural disasters now, and it was always fun. But this time, it rained consecutively for five days. And just one, like, it all happened so suddenly. The whole place was flooded. It started, you know, a little like bit by bit. We just noticed we were walking in water. And before you knew what was happening, the water was knee level. And the patients were sitting up in bed and wondering what's going on, you know. Right. You know, oh, we too, because at the point, the patients had to swim out of the room. Oh, wow. No. It was that bad. No. Everything happened too fast. No. Did your homes get ruined also? The, the hospital is like in a valley, kind of, and we've never had that kind of rain. So, oh, wow. It was crazy, really. I we, bet. We have people that have limbs amputated. Oh. We have hanging legs, hanging, you know, like you're just trying to save yourself. What time do you have to go cut the, I mean, you have to move this patient out of, oh, it was bad. Oh, I'm just trying to imagine. Bad. Really bad. And it happened too fast. I'm serious. It just started by noticing that, oh, there's a lot of water on the floor. Oh, call housekeeping. You know, stuff like that. Oh, so it happened with a minute, in a matter of hours, maybe? Mm -mm, mm -mm. It wasn't up to an hour. It, everything I'm explaining right now. Like 30 hour. minutes? Yes. Wow. She's the housekeeping. Rains it, were... There's water. Yeah, there's the water, water on the floor. You guys, and they were really fast. They were responsive, trying to mop up. Before you know it, the water was knee level. Wow. It was that bad. And, I mean, between knee level and you trying to figure out what was happening. Oh, is there a leak? Oh, it's raining. Oh, maybe it's going to, okay, it will stop soon. You know, things like that. We had to swim out of the room. Wow. So, um... Yeah, disasters will happen, and, and was I've I've never I think the only thing I've ever been a part of was like tornadoes. Yeah. Yeah. Tornado drills, but your facility, they're gonna teach you about their disaster plan once you get hired. Okay, and when you get hired, they're gonna. In orientation, fire drill, um, tornado drill, everything, they're going to let you know about it upon hire. The first couple of days, you should know. But you do have a priority of movement when disasters happen. The first people you want to get out are the walking people. Students often ask me why we move in walking residents first. It's not fair. The thing about it, if you don't move to walking residents, you know what's going to happen? While you moving the residents who are non-ambulatory, the walking people are going to be trying to get out because they can. And so what you're going to do, you're going to start knocking them over. So it's best to move them first so you won't have to worry about them trying to get themselves out. Move them to safety, then move your wheelchair and your walker residents, and then you're going to move your bedridden residents, residents okay? Now, fire and safety um, is another thing. Fire safety is a major responsibility because of oxygen safety. Because if you want to see some people move, let a fire drill go off, fire alarm go off. We move quickly. You're going to grab any extinguisher that's close by because somebody's going to let you know. You're going to know where the fire is, and you're going to proceed to that fire because the goal is to put the fire out before it meets oxygen. If you don't have a major fire drill, you will have... Uh, a fire drill every three months is mandatory so that um, you can prepare yourself in the event of a true fire, you will know what to do, okay? 
Another thing about the fire drills and fire safety is that exit door should never be locked or blocked, ever. Locked or blocked. We don't deal with nursing home fires. There's a, a nursing home fire in Pennsylvania a couple of years ago. The only one I ever seen, it was horrific. Four people died. And once I read the article, it said the sprinkler system did not work. It was not working. Yeah. So you do have, if you look through your packet, you have a fire safety handout. It's race and pass. Find that for me. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a bad, bad copy. Turn. Let me see. Turn around. I'm going to have to retype that. Race and pass. The R in race stands for rescue, the rescue the resident, and take, take them to safety. A stands for alarm the staff. Alarm the staff. Yes. C contain the fire by closing the door. All doors in the facilities are fire safety doors. So the goal is you close the door to contain the fire as long as it can, okay? E, extinguish the fire. Okay. P, pull the pin. Pull the pin. A, aim the nozzle. Aim the nozzle. S, squeeze the trigger. Squeeze the trigger. S, sweep at the base of the fire. Sweep at base of the fire. Very good. Very good. And believe it or not, we are finally done with chapter 10. It's a long chapter. <laughs> you don't think so? Well, no, because you're giving us, like, what is it? Based, well, I'm going based off, like, school-wise and then the way you're teaching us. You're giving us the, the general main information and not reading word for word. No, you can't read word from word. I think that'll put you to sleep. Yeah. I mean, 